G'day, I'm Eddie Springer. Today I'm here with Chris McClellan, our longtime friend and uh, collaborator. We've known Chris for a long time, so g'day Chris. G'day Eddie, how are you mate? I'm good. Good to be here on a chilly Friday morning. So today we're here to look at a Kimberley camper or Kimberley caravan. We did a little uh, end drive refit on. Take us through some of the stuff uh, we've done here, Chris, and also why a van like this needs a lithium upgrade. So she's an old Kimberley caravan, quite a few years old. It was set up with an original AGM bank of batteries. The bank of batteries that was in this camper, 10 35 amp AGM batteries. All, all in parallel. All in parallel, single bank of batteries. Yeah. So what's the rule of thumb with paralleling batteries? Oh, About four? Three or three four, or four maximum, yeah. This thing had 10 of the buggers. So what it's got, it's got a lot of resistance and a lot of weakness in the batteries. Those weaknesses have obviously led to a shorter battery life and the customers wanted a better solution. We're finding at Enerdrive, we're getting a lot of these old caravans that need a big battery system. These campers, for what they are, have quite a large power draw. Sometimes they can have the ability to run the air con. They've got 12 volt fridges, lots of lights. They're a very power hungry camper because of what's in them. They're a great system. Yeah. So what do you do to put a big power system in a camp like this? You go lithium. Yeah. It's the only way to go. So those batteries are located forward of the wheel arch as well. So all those 10, 35 amp hour batteries sitting on the front draw bar adding a lot of weight to this van. So the other advantage of swapping out to lithium is we reduce the weight on the tow ball. So we've got more capacity, so yep. 10, 35 amps, they had 350 odd of AGM. We've now got a 300 amp and a drive lithium system in there. We've effectively given 25, 30% more capacity out of that battery. Yeah, more bank. usable more capacity. More usable capacity. So 300 yep. amps versus 350, but a lot more depth of discharge available. So the Enerdrive system that we've put in here, what type of battery have we used and why have we gone to that type of lithium? So this is our, uh, our Pro Series. This is what we call our White Box Pro Series lithium. It uses large format 300 amp prismatic cells. By large format, the cells we're talking about, they are about yay by yay by yay, and they're a very high current cell. DIY type lithium battery systems. In our inner drive range, we do a BTEC. Yep. They use internal manage, internal BMS management systems. Yep. So what happens with those internal management systems? You're limited to parallel capabilities. So you're okay. really only limited to the capacity of the battery. Yep. They don't like large loads. They, they have a great purpose, but when you get large drawer applications, we always prefer to go to that white box prismatic format. So, so the BTEC may be more for a little canopy battery, small setup lithium. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. This one, white box, bigger capacity, larger battery, for these heavy loads, larger inverter loads. Absolutely. Yeah, that's big, exactly big what they're for. Bigger caravan, bigger power system. So we're using a lot of the white box system where they want to run air con demand, short term air conditioning demand, yep. where they might also have limited solar capacity. So the other downside to these types of campers is they don't have a lot of room uh, for solar. Yep. So you're limited charge. Yep. So you want that deeper depth of discharge available out of the batteries, which is again what that Pro Series allows. And take away a small generator with this vehicle. Lithium allows you much faster recharge time. So an hour on the generator with a good battery charge gets that energy back into that lithium battery so much faster. This camp has got a 60 amp uh, charger on board. Yep. That 60 amp charger will throw 60 amp per hour into that battery. It's yep. phenomenal. Yeah. Charge rate's shorter. Your gen run time, of course, in those sensitive environments like national parks is shorter. Yep. And then if we didn't have access to generator, we could always plug our vehicle up. We've got DC, Enerdrive DC to DC charge controller in this as well. We can charge from our vehicle into that lithium system as well. So three forms of charge, little bit of solar, small flexible panels. If we want to increase the solar capacity, we'd have a large portable setup for solar, but we've got our solar charge, we've got our vehicle charge, and we've got our 240 volt charge. So three forms of charge, big lithium setup. This thing can go anywhere. So around here at the front of the vehicle, this is where the brains of the system is and also where the lithium battery is situated. So we used to have a large case in here with the 10 35 amp hour AGM batteries all in parallel. A lot of weight, a lot of parallel connections. We've now got the one uh, white box lithium battery and also all the control equipment. So talk me through some of the stuff that we got in here, Chris. Certainly shall. And just remember one thing, those 10 batteries was a lot of space. Yeah, a lot of space. Huge amount of space. This whole area was consumed. So storage, we've now gained a little bit of area or whatever it might be. So what do we got in? We have a 300 amp battery system. The 300 amp battery is four lithium prismatic cells. They're strapped together. That's how they make the battery pack. This is fairly simple, straightforward. The real lithium system comes in the, the brains of the system. So what we have with lithium, you need to maintain it. You need to manage it. It's called a battery management system. The battery management system is effectively looking at how to correctly charge that battery, how to not overcharge it, and most importantly, how not to let it go flat. Too flat, yeah. So lithium has a very flat voltage curve. Yep. We all remember those old table charts of AGM showing 
Full 14 volts. Yeah, well, we've still got some stickers on ours. <laughs> still got stickers yeah, on yours. You still yeah. use them. Yeah. Lithium doesn't work like that. Lithium is flat. Flat voltage. Yeah. Flat voltage all the way through. And so that voltage is typically around 13 to 13.2. Yeah. So low battery disconnects, low battery alarms just do not work on lithium. And that also plays into the need for a battery monitor. So the little EPRO inside to monitor the lithium so that we can see the state of charge because voltage is not going to tell us how this battery is performing. Not at all. So the only way to do it, as you said, is state of charge. The yep. state of charge is effectively 100% down to around that 25% remaining. So yep. that's effectively the ranges that Enerdrive works on in our systems. Yeah, excellent. So we talk about capacity, 300 amps. That 300 amp battery has around 76% usable amper hours yep. inside that pack. Obviously, anything lower than that, you get to a point, some crazy terms, the lithium cliff. Voltage goes stable and then it just falls off yeah. and it goes to eight volts, three volts, whatever yeah. it might be. And you we, want to keep above that. We don't want to get to that yeah. point. That's where we want to stay. So what we have is a management system. With the Enerdrive solutions, they're very simple to install. We have master fuse, large format class T, just doesn't blow. It's yep. not meant to blow. Yep. The protection of that is if the cable ruptured, if a battery yeah, failed, so fault something protection. really yeah. went wrong, that fuse is designed to blow. Excellent. Below the fuse on the uh, on the positive, it comes through to a battery switch. This battery switch is designed to disconnect the loads when the batteries go flat. Okay. And that battery switch is controlled via the battery management system or our smart relay driver. The smart relay driver takes a number of inputs. It takes cell voltages, yep. state of charge, and it then combines that to work out what it should do. So if the batteries are flat, it wants to disconnect the load, so it'll trip the relay out. Yep. On the other side, if the batteries are full, it also wants to make sure that the chargers either stop charging or if there's an issue with the batteries, to turn the chargers off. So we can also turn battery chargers off with this. We can also allow inverters and loads to turn off under certain circumstances. But most importantly, if that battery goes flat, we can just turn the thing off. And so if that was to trip that unit, that yellow toggle on top's got to move to the right. It comes up it comes with a bang. Up. Yeah, okay. And then all you need to do to reset it is it's very simple. Get your generator started, because you're out in the bush, you've got no power. Yep. Get your Jenny started, plug your battery charger in, and push that button back in. The charger will engage straight away. Yeah, gotcha. It'll start charging the batteries, and you'll get your current back in. If you were stuck and you had no charge, you can hit that button, you get another few minutes available of load, that allow you to get out in the dark, whatever it might be. Alternatively, could you get your vehicle plugged up? You can get your vehicle yeah. plugged up. DC to DC. Fire yeah. your DC DC up. Get and that away charging. You go. Push the button back down. Yeah. Get some life back into that battery. And the timer on that is so that people don't just reset it and then forget. Yeah. And then the batteries go flatter and flatter and flatter. Yeah. Because the number one issue with lithium is if you let them go flat. Let them go flat once. That's fine. Let them go flat a couple of times in a row. Again, not a big issue. If you let them go flat and you leave you them flat, flat yeah. that is when the cells will fail. Yeah, okay. okay. And it's a lot of investment to have failed due to being flat. So when we're talking lithium, I hear stories and fear of fire with lithium and fear of issues. Talk me through the chemistry and how it works and what type of technologies are going to have low fire risk and how it goes together. Well, they're not mobile bombs, put it that way. Yeah, okay. So they're not fire. Well, that's a they're good not that's something to dispel. They're not fire traps on wheels. Yeah. The technology we use, and pretty much most of the lithium in this country they use, is lithium iron phosphate. Yep. Lithium iron phosphate is an organic material. It is a non-flammable material. It'll smolder, but it won't burn. It's not what you would classify as a high fire risk. There are some lithium technologies that we know that are used in RC, model RC cars and planes, and they are lithium polymers. They are a fire risk. If they right. go up, they go up with a very, very, very large bang. Not this technology. So, so lithium ion phosphate, happy to be in a front box like this, but what about under a dinette, in a van, internally inside? Most of our systems are fitted underneath the bed. Yeah, okay. And that's a simple fact. AGM in the old days, you wouldn't really have fitted AGM inside a caravan. A lot of people do, but the downside with that is if you had an overcharged situation, you get a very horrible smell inside the, the, the van. Not an issue with lithium. The other fire risk that does occur is from installation. So lack of fuses, lack of protection, circuit protection. Yeah, so more Again, chance of fire risk back. in the cable and the way it's Components installed not rather that. than the battery. Correct. Excellent. They're expensive bits of gear. Obviously cheaper cost per cycle, but talk to me about the life of a lithium and how long we should expect to get out of it. We may not be using this lithium to its full cycle life out of three to 5,000 cycles, but we're going to get a longer life out of this over an AGM. Talk me through the lithium lifespan. Very true. And let's talk about an AGM average life cycle. It can be anywhere from one to three to four or five years. Absolutely. Depending on how you look after it, how you charge it and what you leave it in. Lithium, 
The facts are lithium in this country, we're only five to six years of using lithium full time in these type of applications in the country. Okay, so far six years, no failures, no lo end of life failures, yeah, of course. It. And that's what we look at. We look at end of life. We don't look at neglect or, or Same or thing problems. applies to AGMs. One of my favorite sayings, batteries don't, don't die, die prematurely, they're, they're, they're murdered. They're murdered, exactly. So you can still murder your lithiums. This is an expensive bit of kit. You want to make sure you're charging and maintaining it properly. We believe cycle life will be somewhere between seven and 10 years. Yeah, okay. And that exact number, it's very hard to put a, you know, a statement on where it will actually be. Seeing a lot of cheaper lithium products available on social media, and some of the claims seem a little bit misleading and a little bit different to what I would expect from a lithium manufacturer. So things like high current capacity for a low weight battery. We're seeing things like, yes, can be connected to a normal charger, normal solar controller. Surely these sorts of things aren't gonna go well for a lithium battery where you're spending good dollars on a product you want to last. Talk me through how this is going to eventuate for some of those customers purchasing through a social media channel for their lithium products. So at Eden Drive, as Eddie said, we've been doing lithium pretty much since inception, which is not a long time in this country, but it's still a long time in terms of market. This system, we allow it to parallel. We have a method on this to allow it for paralleling. We can get this up to a 400, 600. We've even done a 900 ounce system in this. But let's talk that consumer market. So you do canopies. We have a product in that range called a BTEC. We specifically do not allow our BTECs to be paralleled. Yeah, okay. We do not allow them to be seriesed. We also limit the size inverter we can sell with a specific model. So if you buy a 100 amp BTEC, from us, we're not going to let you put a 2000 watt inverter on that. Yeah. Why? They don't work. I don't care what Facebook says. If you say yes to a question, yes to another question, and every single question, can I run a normal AGM charger? Yes. Can I run a coffee pod machine on your 120 amp battery? Yes. I'm sorry, that does not work. Yeah. It will work for once, it'll work for twice. If you're spending $1,000 or thereabouts on a battery, and if it doesn't work after four, five years, you bought a pup. There's yep. no doubt about it. And when we're talking purchasing Enerdrive products and purchasing from an installer like Springer Solar, longevity in the industry. You know, we've been around 17 years. I've known Chris nearly all that time. We've worked in his old company and in, in Enerdrive. So buying from a company with proven track record, proven performance that is going to be around, owned by the people that are talking to you. You know, we, we put our systems and our family names on the line when we sell these products we're going to be around to support them throughout their life. Lithium is a new technology. Listen to the people that know what they've done, know how, the, how they work, play with them all day long. They're not just trying to sell a product out as quickly as they can. Yeah. So buy once, cry once. Yeah. Spend that little bit more, buy a good quality product. Lithium is something you want to last. It's a long game. You buy a cheaper lithium that says it can be charged from any, any type of technology you're going to end up with problems. You may as well have just bought a good quality AGM. You know, you're gonna get the same life out of it. If you wanna buy lithium, buy it properly, do it properly, you know, neat, tidy, enclosed product, good quality BMS, good quality components that make up the entire system and it's gonna work well. Absolutely. Thanks for your time today, Chris. Thanks. Lovely to see you again. Good to see you, mate. And see you later, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for checking out our video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got plenty of other stuff available online. Please like our page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.